Every thought is a reality, and every reality is a thought. To look into imagination means to look into infinite possibilities. It means to explore a reality within your mind and feel into it and actually proceed and create something that is yours. Okay? When we talk about imagination, we have to define it as any internal stimuli. It can be an image, it can be an idea, it can be a picture, it can be a feeling. Anything that you are able to create within your head. It cannot be felt with your five senses. It is only seen through the inner eye. This is something that we have not been taught. We are not taught about imagination in school. We are not taught about how to use it. And we are not taught exactly what the features are of it. And this video is going to be about the truth and the power of imagination. And I hope to be able to teach you how to create your own world and live in a more in, live it in a more intentional way and a creative way. I would first like to begin by saying that imagination is one of the most underrated tools for creation, for it is how all of creation is created. To explain imagination means to explain the connection between our mind and the mind of God, or the Creator, or the All, as the Kibalion would explain it. The Kibalion defines the universe as mental. Everything is mental. All comes from the All, right? If we were to look into this, it is kind of like a meditation. The world comes forth as a meditation from God or the all. And as such, we are all in connection to God in that form because we also possess the ability to imagine. Think of the way things are created. Think of the way your life has come out to be. It is a result of a continuous process of creation derived from imagination. Imagination is the cause of all of the physical objects that we have, all of these things that we have, the mic that I carry in my hand, the camera that I use to record, the bookshelf that I use to carry my books, all of these things were first an image inside somebody's head and then they were put forth into this external world and realized. But first, what must be remembered was it was first an image, non-physical, non-sensory stimuli. Really quick, if you're liking this content, if you find this content interesting, please go down below, hit the like button, subscribe. I got more content coming, more ideas to talk about, more ideas to share, and more experiences to hopefully live. All right? So once again, drop a comment, drop a like, Subscribe. You know where it is. Thank you. To explain imagination, I would first like to put out the idea that the universe is like a woman. It is like the mother. To impregnate the, a woman means to give it an idea. An idea is like a baby. It is like a seed. And it has its own process of actualization, right? If I were to, for example, a baby has nine months, um, I don't know how much time bamboo or whatever kind of plants have to actually rise out from the ground and, and blossom into fruition. But every idea, every image, everything has a development. And it is impregnated first in your mind and it is actualized later into the real world. This is the process that all of the greatest thinkers of the world know. To hold it in your mind, an image, and to hold it every day and actualize it is the work that every man and every woman has the ability to go forth with. If we want to create our own life, we must first begin with our thoughts, with our imagination. And so to look at it, in this form means to look at the universe as it is because the universe is both positive and negative masculine and feminine and so in the way that God creates God creates in both by using both of these energies and when we behave 
in a way where we create, we behave like gods ourselves. And the more we practice this, the more we realize our connection to a higher form, a higher intelligence. Our mental state is the most important thing to think about, is the most important thing to focus on. Where our mind lies is where our future lies. Where our mind lies is where our life lies. Life lies. Okay. Anyways, if we're able to imagine within our head what we want and live within that imagined state and act through that imagined state into this world, then we are able to attract what we want because we attract what we are. This is at the basis. It's the same principle that the law of attraction uses. We attract what we are. We attract what we think about. And so if we are able to align our mind into that imagined state, then we are able to create and bring that state into reality. It will become reflected into our life because the universe is not dual. The universe is in connection to who you actually are. It gives you a reflection of who you are. And this is why when you think about anxiety, stress, and all of these negative thoughts that can circle around your mind, these situations are as real as even the actual situation. For example, having the fearful thought that you will get sick will eventually cause you to become sick. This is the way the mind works. This is the way the universe works. And that if we realize this, and if we can only focus on the state that we want to create, then we will live in that state forever. And this is how we create. This is how we bring into reality what we want. And so the hard part here is to learn to tap into that state, to train our mind to flow into that state every day, and to act from that state. The most important thing here is thinking from the end. People always think about achieving and wanting to get somewhere. They want to get to the end. But when using the imagination, you are thinking from the end. Now imagine yourself getting what you want. How would you feel? How would you act? What would you think? Who would be the people around you? Etc., etc., etc. These are the things to think about. These are the things that are going to actually lead you into the life that you want to create. Why? Because if you can live in that imagined state, then you will attract everything that will align you into that imagined state. And so you are being rather than doing. So you might be asking yourself, how do I do this? How do I train my mind to actually live from the end? How do I train my mind so that I create the state that I want. And it's very simple. If you realize this, it'll help you and it'll give you more confidence, right? The thing is that the body embodies the mind. It is called embodied co cognition. You can look it up. Scientists talk about it all the time. There's a lot of research going into it, especially now because of virtual reality. But anyways, the body reflects what the mind is because the body is the mind. And if you were to imagine yourself in a place, or if you were to imagine yourself doing something, for example, if you were to imagine yourself eating something, your body will react as if you're, you are actually eating, right? Or if you were to imagine a state, then your body will actually embody that state. When I think about something that makes me happy, I become happy. When I think my, about something that makes me angry, I become angry. So, with this in mind, if you think about what you want, then your body will embody that, okay? You will embody that. And so, the only thing is learning to stay in that, or more so, learning to not derail from that imagined state. And another thing, another tip that has helped me a lot, has been the practice of nocturnal embodiment, or nocturnal impregnation. That's something I came up with. Um, the term basically, but Neville Goddard, Goddard talked about it. Basically, you think about these things, the things that you actually want to create, 
you embody the mental state as you fall asleep. And as you fall asleep, all you can do, all you do is focus on this mental state, and then you will wake up into that same state. And then you will basically be training your mind to easily come back into that flow. That is basically the practice. That is basically the game. The game here is to come back into flow with that state that you desire. If you can train your mind to do this, if you can train your mind to stay where you want to be, to live the life that you want to live, then your life will reflect that. And so basically that's, an, that's one way to practice it. I would suggest that you practice it. Now uh, look into what you actually want to create. Think about all these things. Who is it you want to become? How is your life going to look like? How are you going to feel? Who are the people you're going to be talking to? Um, what are you going to be doing when you wake up? All of these things, the ideal, whenever you think about this ideal, you must exercise it as if you are already that ideal. And when you become that ideal, then the ideal becomes real. Practice it in your life. Try this nocturnal embodiment. Do it every night and see what happens. The world will show you. Now it's just your turn to open your eyes and try. <laughs>